where you have fallen, you will stay. In the whole universe, this one and only place is the soul place, which you have made your very own. The country runs away from you, house, mill, popular ever, in struggling with you here as if in nothingness mutating. But now, it's you who won't give up. Did we fleece you? You've grown rich. Did we blind you? You watch us still. Your bare witness without speech. In response to the German philosopher Adorno's famous dictum that to write poetry after the Holocaust is barbaric, this poem was written after Auschwitz by a Hungarian Catholic poet, Janos Pilinski, who wanted us never to forget. He dedicated his life to writing about the sin of humanity and the responsibility of the ones who have collaborated with the evil. Millions of souls were lost during the years of Nazi tyranny. Let us pay our respect to those who have perished and suffered, and let us reaffirm our solemn vow to never let it happen again. Madam Director General, Your Excellencies, dear David, your Excellency Ambassador Samuel Pizar, dear Judith and Leah. Dr. Samuel Pizar knows intimately the capacity of humankind for genius as well as for madness. He has personally experienced it. That he lived to hell the word of the horrors of Holocaust and to advocate for peaceful coexistence is a real triumph of human spirit. He was a child who survived against terrible odds. A feral child still lives haunted within him. The little one with the sunken eyes and shaved head helps a lot, says Samuel Pizar. He is very severe with me. He disapproves of so many things he is a kind of conscience. His entire family perished in the camps. My memory is the only tomb they have, recites Samuel Pizar in his Kaddish, the Jewish prayer for the dead as a tribute to the loved ones he lost. The journey from the depths of the man-made hell to normality must have been a very difficult one. It took a long time for him to restore his physical, moral, and intellectual health. But despite of all, he has remained an active optimist. His Kaddish is a warning to the world out of control, reminding us of the need to be ever vigilant against a similar outrage that may take place anywhere in the world. Keeping the memory of Holocaust is not an easy responsibility. It means speaking about the horrors that are unspeakable. It means experiencing that which is often regarded as unimaginable. It may be tempting for some to let these horrors fade and become a distant memory. We are not naturally predisposed to see evil and to recognize human potential for it. We have gathered at UNESCO to dedicate ourselves to fostering lasting peace based on human rights and dignity, and therefore we have a special duty to keep the memory of this outrage alive. To remember Holocaust is to teach about it to our future generations, bringing the reality of the past to the forefront of the people's minds. So, they can build a future where such violence would be unthinkable. The victims were not from distant lands. 
they were our neighbors, our colleagues, our fellow citizens. It is here in Europe, in the heart of the proud European civilization, that the murderous Nazi machine exterminated millions of innocent lives with mind-numbing efficiency of the death camps. It is in Europe where the forests, the meadows, the buildings keep the memories of the children, women, and men who perished in their midst. And it is in Europe where we have a special responsibility to face our past, to remember those who fell victim to the Nazi ideology, and to do the utmost to keep history from repeating itself here or anywhere else in the world. To remembrance, the remembrance of Holocaust is not only about victims, it is also <coughs> about heroes. The heroes are the men or women whose spouses, parents, and children were murdered before their eyes. The heroes are the survivors of Holocaust, those who passed through the horrors of the concentration camps and found the courage to fall in love to have children and to begin their lives anew. These survivors tell us the story of Holocaust most vividly, and by doing so, render an, an invaluable service to humanity. We should also remember the many ordinary citizens, many of them unknown to us, refused to be bystanders in the face of Nazi atrocities and help the fellow humans to avert near certain deaths by giving them shelter, by offering a life-saving cover from the oppressors. And I would immediately think a person like Raoul Wallenberg, who as a Swedish diplomat at the occupied Hungary issued protective passports and established safe houses, saving tens of thousands of lives. By the initiative of my government and the Swedish and the Israeli governments this year, we dedicate to Laurel Wallenberg. On behalf of the member states, I would like to thank Madame Irina Bokova, the Director General of UNESCO, for her commitment to use all of UNESCO's potential to ensure the remembrance of Holocaust, to promote Holocaust education, and to engage such outstanding personalities as Dr. Samuel Pizar in our common efforts. Educating young people about Holocaust is as imperative today as ever. I've just read yesterday in the Stern magazine that every fifth young person between 18 and 30 doesn't know Auschwitz. And according to the survey conducted by Forza Institute, only every third person knows that the camp was in Poland. Dear Sam, my dear friend, thank you for dedicating your time, your memory, your active optimism with your family to us, to UNESCO. We need you. <laughs>